Hello everyone. What can we do to observe a place in space that you can never reach? How can we see the unknown places of our universe? By sending James and the Space Telescope into space, this was achieved. For example, one of the places where the Space Telescope is directed is the furthest point of the universe, and the findings about the end of the universe can be terrifying. So, what can the telescope find at the end of the universe? Does this question also make you feel weird? In today's video, we will talk about the terrifying discovery that James and the Space Telescope made at the end of the universe. Let's get started. With the Games app Space Telescope being used, you may wonder exactly how advanced it is for this field. According to NASA, this new telescope sent into space is so sensitive to the infrared light it captures that it can detect the heat of a wild bee, even at the distance of the moon. For better understanding, let's point out that this telescope is 100 times more powerful than the iconic Hubble telescope, which has been offering us wonderful photos of the university for more than 30 years. Of course, Hubble also took breathtaking photos of space, but it had limits. For example, Hubble did not allow us to see the first galaxies formed after the Big Bang. The web changed this completely because it works like a time machine. We have a 14 billion year old universe story. So it seems like we're missing the first chapter. This telescope captures light that has traveled the cosmos for 13.5 billion years and extends your views in the universe to a few hundred million years ago. What makes the Webb telescope so powerful? Part of this power comes from its 6.4 meter diameter mirror. This mirror is made up of 18 small pieces perfectly aligned. These segments are coated with a gold layer so thin that it is 1,000 times thinner than a single hair strand. 24 karat gold reflects infrared light better than other metals. Infrared is outside the visible spectrum humans can see. On the other hand, the mirrors are not made of gold but of beryllium. The telescope needs to stay cold for it to work correctly. This is provided by a five-layered sunshade the size of a tennis court. The sun-facing side can withstand about 126 degrees, while the other side stays as cold as 220 degrees. Look at this temperature difference. This sunshade gives a sun protection factor equivalent to a million. On the other hand, one of the things that worried scientists and the telescope was that the problems arising during both the launch and the operation could not be solved. For example, during its lifetime, Hubble has made five service calls with space shuttles to correct its initial blurry vision and perform maintenance and upgrades. However, the reason for this is that Hubble is only 550 kilometers away and the Webb Telescope is much farther, almost 1.5 million kilometers away. As a result, this distance is way beyond the reach of space repair crews, so NASA has only one chance to do things perfectly. However, if suitable technology is developed, scientists may one day send a robot to refuel the baby, or they can add fuel. Speaking of fuel, at the beginning, they thought the telescope would only work for 10 years, but thanks to the efficient launch, there is enough fuel for 20 years. For now, scientists are waiting for the first photos it will send this summer. It is a fact that the Webb Telescope will help to research the prayers of dark energy in the universe and understand the prayers of these very ancient objects. Thanks to the telescope, we can explore the universe and determine whether there is life on other distant planets. Interestingly, even before its first photograph was taken, the telescope proved its worth of almost $10 billion. The company that made the mirrors for the telescope had to create a new ground coating, as such a mirror had never been made before. The technology they invented is now used by iSurgions. The company also made significant progress in tasks like folding and placing a sun shield the size of a tennis court. So, when astronomers look through this telescope, what will they see in the farthest corners of the universe? People have been curious about space since ancient times and have used many methods to understand it. However, we must not forget that traveling in the universe means not only traveling through space, but also through time. Before we start, there's something you need to know. To find its farthest point, we first need to know the dimensions of the universe. On the other hand, our universe is thought to be approximately 13,702 billion years old, which makes it quite old. So how big is our home? Scientists estimate its vastness to be about 28.5 parsecs. To understand how big this number is, we need to know some astronomical facts. An astronomical unit is essentially the average distance between the Sun and the Earth, which is about 150 million kilometers. Therefore, 
a parsec is defined as the longest part of a triangle with one short side being an astronomical unit. Further calculations will show that one parsec is equivalent to 3.26 light years or the distance light travels in a year, which is approximately 9 trillion 460 billion kilometers. Here we're talking about 28 gigaparsecs, which is 93 billion light years or 879,780 times 10 to the power of 18 kilometers. Simply put, it's unimaginably vast. For comparison, consider this strange example. If you stretch the DNA of all humans on Earth, it would be approximately 0.109 billion light years long. Now look back at the numbers mentioned earlier. Surprising, isn't it? The maximum speed possible is the speed of light. So, if the universe is 13.7 billion years old, how can the width of the universe be approximately 93 billion light years? Technically, an object that emerged right after the Big Bang moving at the speed of light should have covered a maximum of 13.7 billion light years by now. So where does the matter coming from beyond that belong? Here, everything has taken a scary form. This place is accelerating its expansion. Scientists believe that dark matter and dark energy have a strong influence on this behavior. Therefore, when estimating the width of the universe, the extra distance resulting from the expansion of space must also be taken into account. So, the end of the universe is clearly not 13 billion light years away from the Earth. It's much further. So, what is the furthest astronomical object humans can see? There are objects in the universe we can never see. Why? Because these objects are approximately 16 billion light years away from Earth. This indicates the current cosmic event horizon. Have we reached the end of the universe? No, we haven't yet. Because this distance represents the upper limit of light reaching us. Beyond 16 billion light years, space expands faster than the speed of light. It's clear that light traveling in an expanding space will never reach us. This also means that any event that could have occurred beyond the cosmic event horizon will never be observed by us. However, with telescopes like the SETA Blue Sky, we can see even more. The most distant galaxy observed so far is the GNZ-11, located about 32 billion light years from Earth. Note that this distance is calculated taking into account the expansion of space. About 46 billion light years from Earth we reach what is called the last scattering surface. This is what you can observe regardless of direction. The last scattering surface is like a uniform sound sphere from where the first photons came after recombination and photon dissociation. Contrary to its name, it is the origin of the first scattering of light, but is the last thing we can observe. Have we reached the end of the universe? Well, the answer to this question is both yes and no. Technically, this is the farthest point we can observe in space and time. So, this essentially forms the boundary of the observable universe. Beyond this is something known as the opaque universe, which is the limit of what we can observe. However, of course, there is no limit to what we can imagine. Let's go beyond the boundaries of the observable universe and wonder what might be there. For so long, we have only researched things that existed at a point in space in the distant past. So let's ask an even more mind-boggling question. What could be there right now? The end of the observable universe also marks the maximum distance that can be seen back in time, called the particle horizon. This brings us to the question, is the universe infinite? From Einstein's theory of relativity, a flat universe should directly be inferred as infinite. So let's ask again, can we conclude that the universe has no end? It's not that simple. We can't say for sure whether the universe has an end or not. Share your thoughts about the end of the universe in the comments. See you in the next video. Goodbye.